Welcome to Faith and F Boys. My name is Yang. And my name is Yen. And on this platform, we discuss personal development, millennialism, and relationships from the lens of a Christian woman. And on today's episode, we will be discussing intentionally dating. And I know this is something that we have discussed in the past, but we wanted to really just touch base on our idea of it, if we're practicing it, just bring more present day advice or storytelling. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the first question is, and it's for Yang, Mm -hmm. is for you to, what is your idea of intentionally dating? Um, Okay. So for me, intentionally, intentional dating, um, I think it's a term that stems from um, the Christian views and teachings in the Bible. And intentional dating is something where you are very present and what you want from that person Mm -hmm. because you want it to lead to something. Mm hmm. Very purposeful. Something purposeful, yes. Mm-hmm. So rather that be, you know, uh, uh, just a healthy relationship. It doesn't always have to be marriage. But the goal, especially for Christians, is is marriage. So mm-hmm. um, intentional dating is, it can still be fun. It can still be sort of casual. But you know there is a purpose in mind. You're not just trying to waste time. Mm-hmm. So what would that look for? What would that look like for you? Um, So for me, intentional dating looks like really getting to know someone. And if it doesn't, if you see that that person isn't aligned with you, closing that door Mm. and moving on to the next. Also, something recently that you and I discussed was intentional dating is uh, it's something you have to do. With one person at a time. It's very hard to try an intentional date. (laughs) Three different guys. It's like you won't really be fully invested in any of them as you would if you took your time with with one at a time. So um, that's something I didn't really think of. I thought you could intentionally date multiple people. not saying... (laughs) Four or five people, but Mm -hmm. like one or two people. But even having two people as candidates, it's like to intentionally date, you have to give one person a fair shot. Fair shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I would say is intentional dating. Um, Yeah. And for me, it's, it's more so just like you said, being purposeful. And, you know, originally I thought that I was intentionally dating, but I was doing the just go on dates because I feel like even being a millennial um, we're natural multitaskers. Yeah. So we even do that in the dating space where we're like, we're, it's just fun. You know, we're going out to eat, we're getting to know each other. And then out of that, you'll just weed out people. But actually when you are a Christian woman, or if you are just trying to intentionally date, you're actually, before you even go on that date, you're seeing if that person is a proper candidate. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you found them on a dating app, we'll talk about that later on, or whether you met them, there is something intentional and purposeful that made you even want to go on that date. And then when you do go on that date, you have several questions or several things you want to see in that person to see if you continue continually date that person. So I'm in the process of trying to to do that myself because I know at times we can we can get sucked into the just have fun and date when the reality is that's not how God wants us to do it. Well, he wants us to have fun, Mm -hmm. but he doesn't want it to be where, you know, it's just a free for all. Exactly. That's what I mean. Because I feel like, as you said, when we have so much on our plate, it, it, it takes the intentional and purposeful aspect um, aspect Mm -hmm. out of it. And, and you may grow fatigue in the process. (laughs) Because you're like, oh, I can't keep up. I'm dating him. I'm dating him. You know, I'm trying to keep them straight. I'm trying to remember how I feel about each of them individually. <laughs> Girl. And it gets... Mushing them together. Yes. You're mushing their personalities like, you know, together. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And even if they all have things you don't like, mm-hmm. you may even group it all as, let's just throw this whole thing away. Because <laughs> but you're grouping each individual's cons together and mm-hmm. you're saying you know what none of these guys are a match instead mm-hmm. of getting to know that one 
one that one person on um alone mm. you'll be able to clearly see okay what are the pros what are the cons how do how do i really feel when i'm with them or mm-hmm. um how do i think i feel because those can be two different things as well you're right so you're just right. with mm-hmm. dating one person at a time and when we say purposefully um we just mean something in mind we are we just want to always keep in mind that the goal is to be in a healthy relationship mm. the goal is to to move as an adult in this relationship and we are looking for a commitment at the end of it mm-hmm. um so yeah and a, a lot of people have even get it twisted and confused especially with women overall and what we want and then christian women which is a different level it's not perfectly dating meaning you're not seeking perfection you're not seeking this just this idea of this perfect person cuz that doesn't exist but actually asking those those seeing if that person's aligned in those core areas whether it's family whether it's faith which is huge for us um whether those values that you hold very very dear to your heart those deal breakers just seeing and and having conversation and seeing if that person is a match. And then there are some things that you can't even find out about an individual until you get into a relationship with them when that person is very vulnerable and open with you. Um, And for, for other people, even when you're intimate with them, there are things that that person exposes that it, that that person shows you so it's not about seeking perfection but just make sure you're intentional not just and what I meant by having fun is just going with the flow we, we want to not do that in 2020 as we're intentionally dating is to actually control your flow in the best way that you can where you are walking into the date knowing what you're looking for and if that person isn't it you're not continuing it mm-hmm. you know And I think a lot of people may ask, okay, you know, this is, this is what I do anyway. I didn't know there was a name to it. Another part of intentional dating is pace, you Mm. know, not rushing into things, being deliberate with each phase of date of the dating process, because I do think there are phases even within the dating process. Oh, yes. So pace is very important Mm -hmm. uh, with intentional dating. It's part of, to me, the word intentionality, like Mm -hmm. pace and grace and and just being present. That's Mm -hmm. another thing. And that's why you can't date multiple people at a time if you're trying to be intentional because you want to be present in the moments you're Mm -hmm. experiencing with that person. And and pace just means, you know, I'm going to actually get to know this person, go out on dates with them. Um, see them in different settings, mm. not just um, have majority phone conversations. Just take it and run. And texting throughout yep. um, our dating phase, not just, you know, rushing and jumping the gun and meeting his parents and stuff. Mm-hmm. I think when things are done out of order, it takes away the intentional mm. aspect. aspect of it. Because mm-hmm. there's definitely... Uh, a component of pace to this thing so and the last point I even have to make now that you brought up pace because that's a great word and a great just topic is just like sham just like Yang was saying you don't want to rush into it or rush out of it meaning in the in the dating space like I was saying you're not seeking perfection meaning it's not like you have this booklet out and you're going through your task list you want to make sure that you're actually giving someone the opportunity to be upfront with you and answer those questions and you're giving them maybe another chance, meaning sometimes somebody will say something you you don't agree with or you don't like as long as it's not so extreme, like 100% countering your beliefs, but you can actually continue to get to know that person in a purposeful way and see that your first reaction was actually not the best reaction that you were actually happy that you gave that person another chance to speak with them that's kind of like intentionally dating in a mature lens not going there sporadically thinking that you're going to just go through this quiz the person if they don't get an a or b that they're not they're not able to go to the next date again when it comes to but when it comes to very extreme 
situations. Like if some, like if I were to go on a date and someone told me they're atheist, okay, the date is over. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's over. It's over because yeah, yeah. that is a that's what I'm founded. I'm founded in my faith, so there's no way you can lead me as a man if you are an atheist. So the date is over. Yeah, we wouldn't have even made it on a date. <laughs> so. so yeah, I think it is important to know when to cut it off and when to continue. Mm-hmm. That's part of like mastering. Um, intentional dating because you know no one is perfect you aren't perfect they aren't perfect Mm -hmm. and um, you just have to really know you know when is it time to get off this ride or Mm -hmm. when do this person make it to the next stop yeah so and all of those things um, you will be able to um, maneuver through if you're you know reading your bible um and just holding yourself to that to the word mm. to really understand and that's something that I need to incorporate because <laughs> no, sometimes like we that. just go off our own feelings oh yeah, oh, um, yeah. so it, it can be difficult but I think we should move on to the next question, question. Okay. so oh Getchy, I'm sorry mm-hmm. I just said your whole government it's <laughs> okay and mm-hmm. Share some of your worst dating experiences hmm. and the repercussions from them. So, just one. <laughs> I'll just share one because I do have some stories. And this was actually a recent experience I've shared with Sham and a few other people. And for those that are listening that I've said I didn't share with them, just understand I didn't even want to talk about it because I was that irritated. So, um, I met this guy on a dating app. And, um, hmm, dating apps. And we actually went on, you know, a few dates. And I was actually in another city, which he was present at. And I needed a ride back to Cleveland, my hometown. And he offered to give me a ride. I'm going to make this quick, you guys. So he gave me a ride. On the way there, he wanted to show me his house, which is lovely. Some people think you're crazy, but. Yeah, I am. So I went to his house. He gave me a tour. And then he asked me if I was hungry. Guys listening would be like, that's a trap. And I'm, I fell for it. So, um, so we, so he, we went to the grocery store. He made me some food. Okay, hold up. What? So he went from taking you home to him <laughs> cooking you a meal. Girl, because when, before we were having conversation, I was telling him that I loved his backyard and it was my vibe, just peaceful. So he was like, we passed my house on the way there. You want to go see it? And I was like, yeah, why not? You know? Anyway, we're gonna I'm gonna wrap up this story. So <laughs> yes, it was a trap, okay? It was a trap and I fell for it. So um he gave me the tour, then we went to the grocery store. Um he bought some food and then he cooked it for me as I as I relaxed and watched TV. Um the food was ready, we ate, and then he came and joined me on the couch. And um that is where it all started. <laughs> so we're on the couch watching television and you know, he's like he starts to like cuddle on me a little bit. I didn't mind it, but you know, I didn't want it to go in the wrong direction because I am in his home. And um so we're cuddling each other and then he like starts to kiss me. And I already have a a way of kissing people that I'm working on. <laughs> and it's not good for the initial stages of dating. Um, and I already said moving forward in my dating, I will not be tongue kissing anyone. It will be strictly smooches. And actually, when I, when I typically, when I date someone, like I see that person, somebody I want to be in a relationship with, I don't even kiss them for a long time. Like my ex, I didn't kiss him for months, and he will tell that story till forever. But we actually were kissing, and then he started grabbing things he was not supposed to grab, and I was moving his hands. And then I ended up being in a situation that I did not want to be in. No, nothing happened, but um, regardless of regardless of it, one thing that I things that I did wrong, I put myself in a dangerous situation because this man was way stronger than me, and this man is still a stranger. Um, I'm in his home. He has guns because. He was in the military, and people just have guns. He's stronger than me, and then I don't know him. So I put myself in a tempting situation that I personally did not want to be in, actually had no interest in, but sometimes you kind of just 
finish what you started because it's like maybe you feel uncomfortable mm-hmm. maybe you're in the moment or maybe you feel too uncomfortable to say stop when you're kind of like in too deep but that wasn't me so I at some point ended up pushing him off and I had to do it in a very psychological way to to manipulate him and not trigger him. and not trigger him because I was actually scared at some point because this man was on top of me and he was heading in a direction that was terrifying because I was not approving of that direction. And then he ended up driving me back to Cleveland and we had some, some conversation that was very unsettling and made me realize what I'm what more I'm founding what else I'm founded in and you know I'm not talking to him anymore. So what was the conversation? The conversation was race related. Mm-hmm. And you and know this, man has this is this man his grandfather is originally from Africa but he he identifies as being strictly Cuban. And um shout out to all my Hispanic people. No no problem at all with you all, but he said the N word a couple times for fun. And he looked at me and smirked and I decided to have a conversation about the n-word and it led to very um opposing opinions and he finalized it by saying honestly he could care less about the word and he thinks it it overpowers we're using the n-word is is controlling black people he, he's very disappointed that he that I allow that word to offend me and he said honestly I was tapped out of the conversation about 20 minutes ago I don't care about this issue and I was like wow and this man's driving me home again number two foolish act that I did and um, so I am in a position where I'm not even going to go off as I typically would and educate somebody. I just keep calm and I sit in the car and say, okay, no problem. We can end this conversation. Offer me to come home, go through everything that I did. One, shouldn't have entered that man's house. Two, shouldn't have given a stranger to give me a ride back regardless of how beneficial and helpful it was for my situation. Three, do not kiss. Do not go kissing these men like they are your boyfriend. Like, even if they're moving in that direction, they try to stick their tongue into you. Even if they make the first move and they want to kiss you, be firm in saying no. Be firm in practicing what you preach and practicing what you what you do and do not want. And that is what I'm working on being in the dating space because I've always pretty much been in relationships. So I'm actually learning how to properly date without, and... Without. Mixing in without mixing in all that, what you would do, what you would boyfriend. do with a boyfriend, meaning you're able to kiss them compassionately and you know they're not thinking, Oh, she kissing me like that, that means it's going, it's going down, you know. So, that is that was that was the repercussion from it. I could have been in a very bad situation with a stranger, whether he took advantage of me. Or whether he freaking killed me, chopped me up, and put me in a closet. I never know. God oh forbid. God. But that happens. Like, oh, Gachi, why were you in this situation? Why were you at this man's house? Regardless of him being charming and kind, I still don't know this person. Why did you kiss this man? You see where he was going with it. And you didn't just immediately stop kissing him and say, no, that's not what I want to do. But because you're already kissing him, it's like... You felt like you couldn't say no. Why did it take for him to get on top of me for for me to see that this is this is not the direction I want to go in? So, right. and see, people will be like, okay, but it's just kissing, like that sounds childish. But what we're trying to say is, you know, body language is still a language, and it's still something that is, you know, coming across to the person you're in a situation to mm-hmm. with. So if she's like kissing him you know, erotically and, mm-hmm. and, and and very sexually, you know, it's <laughs> going to uh, leave him to believe, like, you know, she wants this. She wants to move this to the next step. And I take full responsibility, at least partial of it, because it's misleading. Mm-hmm. People do associate tonguing somebody and being passionate as in they're going to the next stage. And mm-hmm. me being that person is not going to the next stage. Like, I have to be careful and know that that is a language of its own. I was, in a way, giving, not consent, but showing somebody what direction I'm heading into. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that was a great example. What about you? And I want to hear your story. Uh, for me, I would just say most the times I've dated, it wasn't intentionally, but it's always just been majority phone conversations and texting. And that stuff is fine when you're like in high school, but as you get older, you know, you actually need to see people in real world situations. And, you know, people could talk a good game over the phone, but it's different when you guys are face to face. And I haven't been in a relationship in a, in a minute now, so my only dating experiences have been, and we're talking about worse, because I've been on one date post my last relationship, and that was a good date. But if I'm speaking of worse experience, I would have to go a little further back. And I was young, 19, 20, but... I don't even know if I can call that dating. I guess my worst experience would be that I never really dated. Mm. I always would just talk to people casually. It turned into a situationship, and then it would turn into a relationship. Mm. I never actually... I didn't even know the word intentional dating until I ended my last relationship. That word was never in my vocabulary. So I think that my worst experience would just be not intentionally dating, just talking to them on the phone, texting them often, even FaceTime, but that doesn't really allow you to get to know someone. And it's it's immature as well. Guys who just want to talk and text all the time, they're not trying to seriously get to know you because they would want to step out and go on that date with you. They would want to be in your presence and get to know how you are. Like a man who's really invested in um, his future when it comes to his next relationship, he's going to be all hands on in a way where you will know what his intentions are. Mm-hmm. And if you know what that looks like, then you know how you should be. We all know the type of man we want when we're speaking of intentional dating. So you have to be that same way. Mm. And I think that's also hard for women because we like to play uh, chase me, chase me, chase me as well. It's a dangerous and that's, game. And that's not part of intentional dating either. Mm-hmm. It's like you have to be upfront. You have to be direct. There is, um, there is little harm in and being enticing but you don't want to get into this cat and mouse game too much because Mm -hmm. that's not what intentional dating is it's setting your standards up front it's letting the person know what you're looking for it's being direct and forward in what you want and being direct and forward when you in what you don't want period um it's not leaving someone guessing i think that's where women fall short where Mm -hmm. men fall short you know, they don't want to commit at all. They'll play games as well. They'll do the cat and mouse game. Um, but they'll also just not be super clear about what they want. It's just very vague, generic type conversation. Mm. So I think on both ends, whether you're male or female listening to this, you want to be intentional um, with conversations, with your standards, with your expectations, mm. uh, with your time. Yes. Um, yes time time is very important and even like you said about the men and they wouldn't know I know a lot of men that actually do but as 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 all of us are struggling with it's about aligning what you want and your actions meaning what you want and how you get it because sometimes people can actually lay out what they want but their actions not follow up Mm -hmm. with what they want Prime example, the story I just told you. I'm sitting here talking about intentional dating, but look what I just placed myself, the type of situation I placed myself to be in. Of course, I'm not perfect, and I'm learning. Well, why do you think you got yourself in that situation? I think I got myself in a situation, one, because I needed the ride home. <laughs> but I mean, as far as him and, now cooking you dinner. Like, and two, how did that come about? And two, girl, that's a great question. A man being kind used to be something that I thought was foundational. Don't get me wrong. It is. 
But I actually realized that a man being kind should just be a given. Yes. Like a human trait. It shouldn't be something that wows me. So when a man goes to the, when a man asks if you're asks if you're hungry and maybe prepares a meal for you or or gets a meal for you, like I shouldn't get all googly eyed and like, oh, this is a husband. We gotta do an episode on that. You know? What are what are what are given what is a given? That mm-hmm. a man should have, and then what are actual additional additionals? Qualities? So, when honestly being upfront, because we're being transparent on this platform, when he started cooking, and 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 you know he's cooking and looking at me, and he has this big, gorgeous house in the suburbs, beautiful forest around a beautiful backyard. I was like, this is a husband, great business man. I was like, yeah, this is a husband, and I love. Men should be anyway. This is how they should be and for his age. You for know, his age, he's thirty years old. Something. You guys, like, oh. he's thirty years old, right? He had he want he has no kids. He wants to start a family. This was very intentional in that aspect, but I let my guard down when I started to see him do kind things and of manly type of things and that's also part of building your strength and sometimes you do have to go through the trials to really see what you're willing what you're able to um to bear and what you actually need to create borders on yeah. meaning i just 100 percent realized that especially in the beginning phases i cannot go over their house they cannot come over mine yeah that is what i need to set for myself and through that lesson and it for it getting that far really confirmed that I cannot do that. So you guys, you guys are here. This is what it's March something. You guys now have heard it. No house trips in the beginning phases, not into relationship. And that alone, we got to set a timing for that. But anyway, we can move and on. We don't, we don't want it to seem like, oh, this now you guys are making dating a chore. But I think Girl. even with movies, a lot of references we have for dating, it's not realistic. You know, you'll see someone on TV going on a date and they're, you know, they're out to dinner, to the movies, to to the parents' house, to the to the bedroom. Like, Girl, on the second date on these movies, they always having sex. Right. And for these younger viewers who maybe aren't even built in their faith or don't even aren't even don't even know who they are, people may think like second day he's cooking for me. I guess I got to reward him by busting it wide open. Exactly. And that, you don't have to like yes. that. That's such a pressure. So even him, he may have taken that as I cooked for her. I, I buttered her up, and guys would be like, "Yeah, I'll get you." That's like one on one. How to get a girl in your bed is to cook cook for her because women. Love food, and we love watching a man cook. Mm-hmm. You know? We do. Oh, girl. Okay, so the next question, you guys, and it kind of ties into my story, is, Sham, do you think that dating apps are beneficial for Christians? Mm. <sighs> <laughs> I think they can be. I don't think the app is the problem. It's the people that's using them. Mm-hmm. And it's also who's claiming to be uh Christian and actually holding the Christian values because a lot of people are Christian but a lot of people aren't holding the Christian values because it doesn't really coincide with culture today Mm. and they don't want to seem too different than Mm. the way things are going these days so it's just about who's on the platform and then it's about you deciphering are they really uh do they really hold Christian values or not I don't think anybody is posing to be a Christian on a site and they're not Christian. So that's not a problem. I think it's gathering Christians, which is good because you Christians most times want to date other Christians. So it's good to narrow it down to that aspect. But then it's extra work for you to see, okay, who's really living that Christ-like life? Mm. So I don't think dating Christians on dating apps is a problem it's just there is a lot more choice and there's a lot more um also could be distractions yeah and so it's a new way to date it's still very new even for people who are non-christians just in general dating apps are still newer um for traditional like compared to traditional dating exactly so i think you know it just comes with the extra set of precautions that you have to have and i think that 
dating online or through an app, it can still be rewarding. You just have to know yourself and not feed into the fluff or the BS that mm. people will present to you. You have to really decipher those first couple conversations and don't be so quick to take people off the app, which is mm. something you did very well. Mm -hmm. You talked to him on the app until it's time for you guys to meet up on the first date. Yeah, he didn't get my number until I met him in person and mm -hmm. was like, okay, we can do a second date. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think you, you know, as Christians, we should keep people on the app until we finally come in person with them and and get a, a good vibe, an okay vibe to move forward. I think also um, look into those bios. Look and see what they're willing to put out there because <laughs> what you're willing to procra proclaim out Probably. loud, mm -hmm. normally you can walk in those shoes. Mm. So if people are just Christian but they don't have anything... If they don't give enough information on their bios, I feel like it's, it's they're not taking it serious. Um, I think the more information you're willing to give, it shows that you're, it kind of shows a glimpse of um, your transparency. Mm. I think also with the dating apps for Christians, um, just making sure you ask the questions you want to ask while on that app so you're not wasting your time and accepting a date that you wouldn't want to accept. Like, I think it just has to be understood. With, Christian, and with Christians intentionally dating, it can be cute, it can be flirty, but it still has to be to the point. Hmm. You know, you're not just on there, you know, oh, so what's, so, you know, what do you like to do in your spare time? That's part of it. But you want to ask more um, direct questions because you're a person who also is intentionally dating they will appreciate that like hey this girl ain't trying to waste my time Period. let me tell her what I'm about <laughs> and if she's not doing that mm -hmm. or if he's not doing that they're probably not looking to intentional date if they're just if the conversation is too casual then they're probably not trying to date in the same format you are mm. so <laughs> I think you can meet your mate anywhere, and I don't think I agree. It's and, subjected to just, and I don't think people agree. I don't think people ways. agree with that because, you know, a lot of and and I'm actually halfway a part of this crew where <laughs> I feel that dating apps are especially Bumble, where it's designated for a woman to reach out first, which I don't think is actually that bad, but it's kind of like forcing yourself to meet people instead of allowing God to place someone. But that's actually like but the way God like God is in that. That's what I'm saying. But the way God works God regardless God is innovative. It, that's what I'm saying. So, the way God works, like he could actually lead you to download that app and you could find your husband, which many Christians have actually utilized that different platforms, dating apps to find their husbands. And they talk about the story. So just like Shem was saying, it's, it's about your usage. Yeah. And for me personally, I downloaded Bumble for the first time when we were in Toronto and um, back in January. And I haven't had the best experiences, and it has led me to delete the app and kind of just focus on my relationship with God. And through that situation I just explained, it showed me that I actually may not even be ready to date overall. Mm. And this is a question that I'm actually asking myself, and I've been feeding my spirit with a lot of relationship um, um, sermons and having relationship dialogues, things like that, but... That's actually, I think right now I need to be just present and by myself. So dating apps can be very toxic, toxic one, if you're not grounded in your faith and how you want to go about it. Mm -hmm. And then two, if you're yeah grounded, because you can actually be tempted because you could, you're swiping. So you're seeing everybody. You can see someone that's absolutely fine and <laughs> absolutely amazing in all the other areas and not, not doesn't have the faith aspect that this person is a man of God and still be like, well, let me just see, because he's so fine and he got everything else. No, sis. And, you know, it's not saying even a dating app will be able to tell you if somebody is a man of God. But if you have that conversation through messaging and he says that he's not a Christian and he's not trying to build his faith, sis, it doesn't matter how fine he is. 
leave him alone. So that's also a form of discipline you want to have because on these dating apps, it's adding another space for you to meet more people. And you may meet people that you're attracted to, but not all the way aligned to. Do you have the discipline to be able to turn those people away? And I'm actually, I'm not fully there because I've had different signs when even dating that guy I'm talking about where I was like, I think I should leave this alone. And Mm -hmm. I continued one because I didn't have um, those options, really, that I was interested in. And then, two, um, I wanted to go out. Just yeah. wanted to go out. <laughs> so, <laughs> I and I wanted to go out and have mind stimulating honestly. conversations with freaking testosterone. Like, I wanted freaking testosterone. Like, whether to smell it or to, to feel it, like, from hearing mm. him talk. Like, but that is still not beneficial for you. So yeah. I think all aiding all aiding all dating apps um do is just expose you, girl. And it holds you to a higher accountability and it really shows are you walking the walk or are you ta- or are you just talking the talk? Hmm. That's really all it is. These new innovative ways to to do God's work or to live a godly life. It just it's just a test girl so um i do approve of dating apps i think it just puts more accountability on you Mm -hmm. to really utilize it for what it's for because you could be dating people as you're going to sleep it could be 12 a.m and you know you shouldn't be up at 12 a.m if you're a christian woman you know what i mean you know what i mean that's when the crackheads and the freaks come out you need to take your butt to bed but now you're on a dating app and mr chocolate tall daddy pulls up in your messages and like what's up and then you can go down a freaking direction that you shouldn't even be wasting your time going in so Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was an extreme example but you know what i mean yeah okay so i'll ask you what do you think God is telling you right now to implement in your dating life. Oh, Jesus. God, what are you telling me? I think God is telling me to follow my heart and to remember in my previous relationships why it did not work. Ooh, that's good. You know, sometimes you, you go through dating or you may revisit previous relationships and for some reason you convince yourself that if you talk a little bit more explain things a little bit more try things again that it's going to be a different outcome whereas not what's the definition of insanity what is a girl doing Doing the the same same thing thing over and over again expecting a different outcome exactly so sometimes we date in the same just dumb way or go back in the same relationships that we're not founded and rooted in faith and all those other core values, but we want to try it again. And I think that's what God is telling me to listen to my, listen to my heart, to listen to him and leave those things alone and to strive towards intentionality. So that's what I'm doing right now. And number one thing I'm doing right now is making sure I'm incorporating him every day and and not just in the morning, nighttime, but talking to him throughout the day and just making sure I build that foundation of myself before I even sit here and start saying, oh, you need to have this in order to be that with me. That is what I was going to making say. Making sure I got it. <laughs> you that know? is what I was going to say. Definitely. I feel like God is telling me, um, you know, because we, especially Christians, we believe that, you know, it's easier for a man to lead a woman or people may believe that in general. For a man to lead a woman. But it's like. I feel like some people. Especially like us. I feel like we have a a greater responsibility. Yes we can be led by a man. Whose faith is stronger than ours. But I feel like. For the work that God wants us to do. Our faith has to be. Just as strong. Girl. So I think that. God wants me to build my faith. In him. And not just depend on a man to come in and fill in the rest. Mm. Because I feel like we are not just going to be wives. I think we are going to be women of influence, of impact. And those things may come before our husband. Hmm. So it's like we can't wait for him to to pour into us the missing pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the same access to God as that man we want. Mm -hmm. Has so I think that 
that is what God has been telling me. I need to make sure I'm on my P's and Q's. And I think it is okay. Um, I think it is okay to... I think it's okay to be the stronger one in faith because we're not just going to be wives. Mm -hmm. We are Leaders. looking to lead mm -hmm. um, people of our age, people younger, maybe even people older, our house, people in our households. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, I think you just have to hone in on what your calling is, mm -hmm. um, not outside of just a relationship and see what it is God is saying to you about dating mm -hmm. because they're all intertwined. Our purpose is intertwined with who will marry. Those, that's very important. That just shook my entire body. As it should, because I'm a pastor, you know. She is. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so that's what I think. That's a fact. I love that. Like, like that last... I don't know if y'all heard that, if that went over your heads, but our purpose is intertwined with our partner. They're not separate. They're not separate. So mm -hmm. if we have not fulfilled... Not fulfilled our purpose, but if we're not walking in purpose, how are we going to sit here and say, where's husband at? Because right. are we the person we need? Are we the wife for our husband right now? Yeah. So you have to ask yourself that. And that's why I was like, I think I'm going to you know, spend some time with myself and make sure I create this lifestyle, a habit, created a lifestyle, you know, instead of something I just do so maybe I can like people think God is a genie bottle maybe if I do this I'll get this like I'm actually curious on what I can become from this process mm -hmm. and then how the world can just open up for me due to me being this transformed person so. yeah because if we look at like we love um Donnell and Dana mm -hmm. they their relationship is part of their purpose in their business mm -hmm. like there isn't really and that's how you can tell when something is purposeful through God. Because it just all comes together. There's no... It's a big old puzzle, no bro. There's no beginning and end mm -hmm. of where the relationship starts and begins, where the business starts and begins. That stuff is all mm -hmm. mixed up in one pot. Mm. And that is, I think, how it should be. People who have lives where their business, their livelihood is separate from their relationship that's how you know things are not supposed to be compartmentalized you know oh what you do God. with your woman ain't supposed to be and the life you live with your woman isn't supposed to be separate from the life you live to make your money mm -hmm. to feed your children to teach your children like all of those things are supposed to be one that's how it's made easy girl you appreciate right that now. that's really how it's made easy their life and their lives and how they work together Donnell and dana it's so flawless and seamless because there isn't one part they're keeping from each mm. other. It's all together. Mm -hmm. Their faith, their business, their relationship, it's mm. all one. Mm. Girl, let me say this really quick. I know it's, it's slightly off topic, but it's not. Because um, there's these guys we, um, we kind of look up to. They're kind of dope, you know, creative guys. Ooh. In Atlanta, oh, they yeah. be doing their thing, and they they do their thing in the club space and these creative spaces, but they also do their thing in the church. And part of intentionally dating is actually recognizing what type of God oriented person you're dealing with. Are you dealing with a person that completely disassociates their lifestyle, mm -hmm. their social lifestyle, with their actual Christian lifestyle? Because mm -hmm. there are people who they they pray. They fast. They go to church. They talk about God. But man, it's like, that's just one component of my life. And the other component, I'm in the strip club. I'm popping bottles. I'm getting drunk. I'm demeaning women. It's like, it's like they're separate. Yeah. But like Shan was saying, everything that's is a part of everything. You can't sit here and... And be in the clubs doing nonsense, grabbing women's booties, demeaning women, talking about their bodies and what they should do to you sexually. And also be the man to say, God is this, this, this. It's like, bro, and people don't like to hear it because people don't believe in binaries. That's another millennial thing. But that is just how it is. When you're rooted in God, he will transform your heart's desires. There's no way you would even be interested in that or you would just make very purposeful efforts to not be in those spaces. So be careful for those type of people that, man, they could preach to you about God, but they're not living as people of God. 
be very careful. And, and it's a, and we're not perfect. I'm not saying. And some people just don't even know that that's what they're doing. Bruh, some people have they no idea. They think that's how it is. Because that's how they're raised. Because yeah. maybe they were raised with Christianity being some type of routine thing of, I got to do this. Did you pray? Did you fast? Did you do this? Oh, yeah, I did. And now I can reward myself, go to the club, and have some real fun. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> yeah, really. You know. So. Mm -mm. Girl, oh, yeah. Is this my question now? No, <laughs> okay, so the, the final oh, yeah. thing is, Sham, we'll both give two tips, but um, what are two tips you would give for our listeners just to end the intentional dating topic? Okay. Um, I would say definitely keep in mind that with intentional dating, you can still have fun. Mm. You can still I enjoy that. that person. I love that. Just you it sounds, enjoy, we made it sound so miserable. <laughs> yeah, it's not supposed to be miserable. And when you are mm -hmm. actually getting to know someone, if you enjoy dating at all, because some people <laughs> just don't enjoy it at all. So right. they're just like intentional dating. What? Oh, this um, <laughs> Just being able to go out with someone and get to know them. It should be enjoyable, you know. We aren't saying bring out your list of questions. And that's what I was telling Ogechi. She wanted to write down <laughs> the questions she had I'm such a for this guy. <laughs> and I'm like, no, don't write down questions. Just let it flow, mm. you know. Now, when you get home, you can make notes on. Because I think it is important to make notes if you feel like you need to, mm -hmm. to remind yourself of what it is you was feeling right after you seen them. Exactly. Because, you know, we're also fighting our own desires and wants of we want this now, we want this and this and this way and this form. And mm -hmm. so you want to just make sure you're being real with yourself because mm -hmm. a lot of times... You can feel multiple things at once. You know, he wasn't really it, but I still want to go to another date. Mm -hmm. So it is important to write down things after, if you want, if you would like, if that's the type of person you are. Mm -hmm. Write down those notes on how that date was, how it made you feel, and what do you want to do moving forward. But when you're going on a date, I think you also want, being present is very, I feel like it's very <laughs> enjoyable. It's something we don't get to do as a society in general mm -hmm. because everything is just, task 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 this list this list this list these goals this ambition that and it's like you don't have time to really enjoy things and it's very enjoyable to be able to go out and talk with someone and 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 kind of pick someone's brain yeah. in a very casual setting mm -hmm. so i think always remember that intentional dating is still supposed to be fun yeah. god created and like you enjoyment know, enjoyment Hopefully and enjoy happiness. this life so mm -hmm. he doesn't want us to be miserable <laughs> yes. he just wants us to be responsible Oof. and accountable bishop okay. so that would be one <laughs> advice the other advice is to make sure the dating life that you want you have the right references around you mm. you know movies tv um music even your own family mm -hmm. how they have dated don't let that be your reference don't let that be your um, encyclopedia like mm -hmm. use the bible use those sermons and anything that's centered in christ use those even just how no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Just make sure you're using the right references, that you're not disappointed because it didn't go how you seen on your favorite movie. Girl. You know, because then that disappointment is already rooted in falsehood. That's not no, even no, no, no. how real dates it's supposed to go. Even goes. So, exactly. you know, and, and for women especially, relax. Mm -hmm. Relax. When we say intentional date, it's not to you know, drill someone on the first date. Girl, you giving three so tips. Anyway. That's part of the fun. She's running her mouth. <laughs> well, you could add that on No, now. but but that was actually mine. That was actually mine. That's okay, why I said I'm that. sorry. Yeah, she be doing that sometimes. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, <laughs> my two words to actually breathe and, and be easy on yourselves. I'm such a, like, sham exposed me and just said it. Like, I'm somebody that... I will 
lay out what I need to discuss <laughs> and start just thinking, thinking, thinking. And Sham even said it herself when she said it to me. And I was like, you're right. She was like, you're only 25 once in your life. And it doesn't mean go ahead and live that fun, free life. That's not what we're saying. But you need to be in the present and actually allow yourself to learn. And sometimes learning, like the embarrassing story I just shared with you guys, it takes mistakes and it takes a couple more mistakes. And then it takes for you to create those borders and barriers. And you're like, yeah, from the previous experience, I learned this. So I'm not going to do this moving forward. Life is a continuous life lesson. Don't beat yourself up and just continue to learn and hold yourself accountable and to have your small group of women or just your group of of people that you can come to be very transparent and open and honest with and for them to help remind you what you're trying to do and also help lead you. Um, and then number two in dating would be for you to date yourself first. Like that is so critical. Um, I feel like a lot of women and men, you know, we have this idea of what we want and we actually, like I said, we're not that person that that person we want needs to have. So just making sure that you know yourself and you are ready to be in those spaces. You know, just, I don't know if I'm ready. And the fact that I'm saying I don't know means that I should spend more time with myself. So be honest with yourself and be easy on yourself. All right. So you guys... Thank you for joining us on this episode of Faith in F Boys. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure to give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to us. And make sure to leave some comments down below on what other episodes you would like for us to, um, to have. If there's any topics that are on your heart. And make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Faith in F Boys. Shane, you got anything else to say? Follow us individually, girl. Um, <laughs> at underscore Maya, M I A H, Monet, M O N E T, girl. And mine, <laughs> underscore, not underscore, at O G E C H I O N as in Nancy, Y E U K W U. All right, y'all. Catch you later.